So we are pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the town website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And with that said, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.02 p.m. We'll take a roll call of attendance. Uh, Dylan. Here. Doug. Here. And I'm here. So we're uh, three of us here and Commissioners De Los Reyes and Hughes are absent. Um, okay. So what is first up? Oh, general public comment. Is there anyone here for general public comment? And, and this is not anything pertaining to any of the hearings coming up. It's just general. And if you have something to say, just uh, raise your hand by hitting the raise hand button at the bottom of your screen. And I don't see anybody raising their hand. Okay, great. So first up, we have some licenses. So what is, hold on, let's see if I can get my target to my agenda. Is it the, um, sorry, I'm having trouble seeing it on my screen. Is this the um, the uh, live entertainments or the common bits? So we have um, live entertainment first, but okay. um, maybe we could, I would suggest maybe doing Coronation Cafe first and we have okay. that person in the audience and we can move on to the rest of the, Okay, so first up is the Common Vicar License for Com uh, Coronation Cafe, and who is here to speak on this? Steve, do you want to introduce this, or is Mr. Kurtz here? Mr. Kurtz is here. Okay, welcome, Mr. Kurtz. Thank you for coming. Yes, uh, hello, I'm here. My name is Joe Kurtz, and I'm representing Coronation Cafe at uh, 103 North Pleasant Street. We are a, brec a new breakfast and lunch cafe that that has just opened. Okay, wonderful. And um, did everyone have a chance, Doug and Dylan? Did you have a chance to go over the the license application? Yes, I did. Are there any questions for Mr. Kurtz? Or yeah, um, actually, I have one for Steve, and uh, and potentially one for Mr. Kurtz. But okay. Um, so Steve, I was noticing in, in the, the printouts from the from the application that it doesn't include the address. Um, so I don't know if that's something that can be included in the printout or yeah, not. I am surprised that didn't come out. I will make sure um, that does in the future. But this is at uh, 104 North Pleasant Street. This is right. where Bart's used to be. Yeah, I did a little look up of that, um, which is good. Um, and I think for Mr. Kurtz, you're looking to do, uh, I think it's eight to three, Tuesday through Saturday. Is that correct? And, and uh, you're talking about breakfast in particular. Um, you know, are there, are there any things in particular about your, your, uh, your business that you'd like us to know or, or things you're considering potentially in the future? Mr. Kurtz, are you still there? We have lost audio. Oh, did he lose his audio? Maybe, Mr. Kurtz, if you can hear us and we can't hear you, can you just raise your hand in Zoom or do some other actions? We might have that idea. Oh, he's muted, unmuted. It's not essential to get an answer. I was just curious. <laughs> It looks like we may have some technical difficulties here. That's okay. I'm sorry, but if I'm being spoken to, I haven't heard anything. No. Oh. <laughs> Not sure if it's something on my computer or what. Okay, so if you, can you hear us now? Can you hear me? No, I don't think you can hear us. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, I, I don't actually, my, 
question addressed. I didn't see. I, I don't have any issue or concern or problem with the with the common victory license. So I'm. Okay. I don't need that addressed. Okay. Uh, Dylan, do you have any questions about the license application? I'm on this one. Seemed pretty straightforward on that. Okay. Um, if we don't think we need any more feedback, would someone like to make a motion to approve? I would be happy to make a motion to approve the uh, common victory license for Corn Ocean Cafe at 103 North Pleasant Street, uh, pursuant to all uh, requirements and, and uh, notifications being uh, uh, completed in, in case they aren't. That's a good point. Is everything completed on this one, Steve? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Thank you. And is there a thank you for the motion? Is there a second? Second. Thank you, uh, Dylan, for the second. So if there's any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, let's take a vote. Uh, Dylan. Aye. Dutton. Aye. And I vote aye. That is um, three to zero with two absent. Did I do that right? And since we have a quorum, the application for, is approved. So I thank you to Mr. Kurtz, if you can hear us, for coming in. Steve, can you let him know? Sometime? Yes, I'll, then, I'll shoot him an email. And then that's, it doesn't sound like he's getting through at all. Yeah, I can hear him talking, but I don't know if he can hear us. All right. All right. Okay. Great. So, and then the next two, which two should we do next? We just do um, Hazel's Blue Lagoon, the live entertainment and the, the Common Vic. All right. And it is, is um, Junior here? Williams. Oh, Mr. Here. Williams, thank you for coming in, Mr. Williams. Thank you guys for having me. Oh, sure. Thanks for coming. We just wanted to get um, I think get a couple of things squared away. So um, did everyone see the common Vic and live entertainment licenses? Yes. Yep. Okay. All right. Do, do, are there any questions? Um, Steve, is everything kind of set up for these? Everything is kind of in place? Yes. Uh, for these, we, we should be all right. Okay, great. Um, all right. Does anyone have any questions for Dylan? I mean, I'm going to ask this one where we've got the common Vic. It's 11 a.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, every day of the week. But uh, I've seen on you guys' Instagram page that you're posting it's till 2 a.m. that you guys are open to. Uh, uh, what's what's going on with that? We're only open till 1 a.m. It must be a misprint. Anybody that can come by and see that sometimes we even closed before 1, 1 a.m. Okay. We've never we've never opened past one a.m. Okay, thank you. Um, great. Uh, any other questions about these licenses in particular or concerns? No. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions for Mr. Williams, uh, would we like to? Is there a, a motion to approve? Do we want to approve at the same time or just one at a time? Um. I'm happy to move to approve both the common victualler and the live entertainment licenses for uh, JP and J Solutions Incorporated doing business as Ace Blue is good. Thank you, Doug, so much for that. Um, is there a second? No, second. All right, thank you, Dylan. Is there any further discussion about these two licenses? Nope, hearing none, let's take a vote. Doug. Aye. Dylan. Aye. And I vote aye, that is three to zero with two absent and the two licenses are approved. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Williams, for coming in. Um, we did, I just did want to bring up very briefly, we did hear about the ABCC hearing and a couple of us were in attendance, but it does sound like everything went all right. And um, I know it's difficult in a university town to kind of keep track of, of that kind of thing. So um, I just wanted to, um, say that we uh all the things that what you had said at the hearing sounded really good that you were on top of it and um that was that was good does anyone else have anything else to bring up about that or steve no okay yeah no. um junior i just wanted to do i ask for the record of you said at the hearing you would be installing new um electronic id scanners has, has that happened yes that's been there we have we have two of them now okay and you right. installed those after the hearing? No, we had then before the, we had one before we added a, uh, a more expensive one. Now, 
All right, super. Okay. Okay, and did you get a chance to review the uh, the happy hour regulations I sent you? Because um, some of those Instagram advertisements also showed violations of that. I just want to make sure you're you're aware of those now. Um, confused in what you're saying. Um, we what we what you wrote. Um, we took that down. Um, I wasn't aware that we had violated. I was just going off of what other people had written on the thing and. As soon as we found out via what you told us, we've uh, stopped that. Okay, yeah, so you do understand that any drink prices that are changed have, have to be remained for at least a week. It can't be any nightly drink specials or hourly drink specials or anything like that. Completely understood. Thank you. All right, are there any other questions, Mr. Williams? Nope. No, ma'am. Uh, okay. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, and uh, we're glad we got those two licenses taken care of. Thank you very much. You have a blessed night now. Oh, you too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. And so our next one up is, uh, where do we go up next? It's live entertainment for live entertainment. Where is I? The 63 Monkey Bar. Oh, yeah, Monkey Bar is live entertainment. And this, Steve, you said was an oversight. Um, or they just forgot to file it. In time yeah, they just forgot to, to file a renewal. Okay, and they have DJs and live musicians and bands. Okay, yes, does anyone have any questions? Oh, sorry, yeah. I just have one. Um, you know, I know that you know, I believe they've done an outdoor um space this this summer. I could be mistaken. I may be misremembering, but um, were they having music outside or only inside? They did. They did apply for that. It hasn't been installed yet. Um, I believe their intention was to offer some light music outside as well, but okay. mostly in the inside activity they've had for many years. Yeah, no, I think uh, just for us as a as a board to think about is that you know with with the addition of of outdoor spaces and the potential for more outdoor entertainment not necessarily good or bad i just think it's something to consider um you know whether we need to uh review those differently or renew the review the application for the outdoor space for the summer differently if they're going to have music outside um you know there's been no issue today people are playing any volume any music they have at a reasonable volume that kind of thing but but i just just put it out there for us to consider that that um we may want to think about how we want to approach that if if we were to have a, 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 a an entertainment license and people were being outside and so and and either having music you know till one in the morning outside or at a volume that's noticeable to more than just the immediate customers that kind of thing i think we we just want to think about that a little bit as we as it might come up for us in the future so just yeah something to ponder. I don't think we have to take any action or do anything specific relative to that. I think that's a good point. Um, I am going to excuse myself just for a second. My keyboard has died at a very inconvenient time, which is making it difficult to take minutes. So I'm going to go run and grab batteries near the side of the room. I'll be right okay. back. So we won't vote on anything until he gets back. Probably best not to make a motion. I know. <laughs> <laughs> this is the, uh, the the uh, exciting part of the video clip when somebody watches this later. Yeah. Well, as long as Steve's doing that, I'm keep getting a call from a number. I'm going to see if it is important. Give me just a moment. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay. I think those uh, batteries have been running since the Obama administration. So oh, wow. unfortunate timing. Get your money's worth. Um, so okay. I will make a motion to Great. approve the live entertainment license for Bistro 63 Monkey Bar LLC at 63 North Pleasant Street. Okay, thank you, Doug, for the motion. Is there a second from you, Dylan? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, is there any further discussion? No. Let's take a vote. Dylan. Doug. Aye. Dylan. I vote aye. 
Aye. Um, and I vote aye. That is three to zero with two absent and the live entertainment license for the monkey bar is approved. Great, okay. So now we move into our discussion items and we have adult use marijuana. Oh yeah, sorry, Doug. This One of the things, so listed on the agenda is the liquor license transaction. Oh geez, sorry, right. Yeah, birth. sorry about that. So this no was, problem. this is still continued. And Steve, you said you got a call from him just before the meeting started. They, yes, he, uh, they are uh, withdrawing the application. He will submit that in writing as well. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, they, they um, I guess they've reached some kind of deal with their landlord. There will now be a pledge involved of the liquor license. Um, okay. And that will uh, need to be re-advertised and given how many changes there's been, um, I, I thought it proper that it just be um, re, 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 reapplied for, so. Okay. We don't have application fees, so, so it won't be so any additional do we need cost to, to them. Okay. Do we need to do anything right now, or does it just we just withdraw? So we don't need to close up or anything, or take a vote, or um, stuff, you know. I mean, technically, I think if we would formally close the hearing, but I think until that withdrawal is formally filed, we may want to not. So, do we continue the hearing until the next meeting? Yeah, I think probably so. Okay. I think that's probably proper. Yeah. Okay. We'll move to continue the hearing. All right. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay, thank, thank you, Dylan. Um, all in favor that, let's take a vote. Doug? Aye. Dylan? Aye. I vote aye. The, um, three to zero, it's two absent. The continued, the transfer of all alcohol premises, license, and change of location, Shilpa Enterprises to Oxbow Wines LLC is continued until July 28th, which would be our next meeting. By the way, Dylan, we're skipping the 21st and going to the 28th because we have, Steve is not going to be here. Uh, I will be gone that week. I'm going to be camping up in Maine. Oh, no. Uh, okay. All right. So but you can have... do a meeting without me if you have to. Right. Um, and Doug is going to be gone. But Doug I, will may... have, I believe I will have remote connection. If I don't, I will let you know Okay. very soon because I will ask that question. Okay. I would be and... surprised if I don't, but. <laughs> but we might have we might have Hallie and Gaston and me which would be a quorum okay so we'll, I guess we'll see how that goes and where did Steve go <laughs> I don't want to do anything until he comes back on yeah it may have been more than his keyboard that failed now oh no <laughs> Did he email? Oh, wait, here he goes. No end of technical problems today. Yeah, you what's poured, going uh, on? <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work when I put the new batteries in. Oh, no. But uh, somehow the it started working and the go to sleep button does work. So I mm -hmm. <laughs> think we should be good now. Sorry about that. Okay, no, that's all right. So we did you get that? We voted to continue the hearing until the 28th. Yes. Although Dylan won't be here and Doug won't be here, but maybe Doug will be here via technological means. Um, okay. And you won't be here, Steve, right? On the 28th, I will be, yep. Oh, you will be here? Yeah, I will be out um, oh, on the 21st, the you won't 21st be here. but the 28th, I'll be here. Okay, great. So the 28th it is then. Okay, so those, those are the liquor license things we have to do. So now let's move on to discussion items. Number one, Doug, adult use marijuana. So I'll, I'll give a very, very brief update. Um, okay. Not as much work as I'd like to on this, but but nonetheless, I was looking up because uh, so there's two pieces to this. One is the, the regs that we have, and I'm going to give them one more read through, which hasn't happened. So I need to do that. Okay. <clears throat> but um, one of the other things that that is a consideration is the actual uh, granting of you know, creating of and granting the authority to us mm -hmm. of the license itself. And so um, I did spend a little time looking at the bylaws because I knew that there was an existing bylaw uh, that did sort of that for keg licenses. Interestingly, on the 29th of June, the, 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 um, some amendments were made to the, uh, to the uh, town bylaws by the, by the town council. I didn't realize they were doing that, but I don't watch their activities as closely as perhaps others do. Um, but nonetheless, they actually, they modified the keg licensing 
Um, and so it's even a better version of uh, a bylaw that we could basically uh, use as a template um, for uh, for the purposes of uh, adult use license, you know, um, adult use uh, licensing. Um, so my goal is to, you know, hopefully in the next meeting or two, um, kind of do one final pass through the, the regulations. Um, and again, just a reminder, if you've got the last version, which was from further ago than I re recall, it's like March when you last had an edit to these. Um, but uh, if that, if, if anyone has any input on that, that'd be great. Uh, but try to get a final read of that together for everyone. And then also a sort of first draft of the how the bylaw licensing would look, because I think if we bring it uh, to the to the council, um, and I, I forget if it's their TSO or their, I forget the committee that specifically looks at like bylaw changes, but if we have it sort of preformed for them, it's very simple. The, the CAG bylaw has really gotten short um, with definitions, it's a page and a half. Um, and so this might be a little longer for us, but I think uh, try to bring that before everybody, make sure we in, encapsulate all the sort of cases we wanna to try to have included in a license like that. Um, and then that way we've got something pretty pretty well defined to bring to the, to the council, both their, sub, you know, their subcommittees that to review these in process and that sort of thing. And then ultimately bring for the full council for approval. So that's where that, that project sits at the moment. Okay, great. Thanks, Doug. Uh, any questions for Doug? No? Pretty good. Yeah, sounds great. Okay. Um, all right. Rental registration. We don't have an update on. That was guessed on. He was working on that with Mandy. Okay, so we'll skip that. Lunch cart regulations. You have a new draft, which... Um, Steve, again, thanks for your input. So Steve did a lot of work on this and I kind of incorporated um, what Steve did and then uh, chopped out a lot of stuff. So uh, I think one of the things I cut out is I had this new language in that, which I'd gotten from another town about there being a, a lottery and a first come first serve basis. And Steve pointed out that that was conflicting with some of the original lunch cart um, regulations that we had, the extant ones from the select board. And I think that was a really good point. And um, so I took that out. And then there were a couple of questions. Oh, also I began the, to move it over to mobile, the language to mobile food establishments on the public way, which I think is, is good. So um, I don't know if I should be using that uh, consistently throughout the regulations, but maybe because we already have the historical language of lunch cart, but it might be, I don't know if it's easier for people just to keep lunch cart and also and call it mobile food establishment. Anyway, um, short term, I cut down the minimum short term and just said no more than 72 hours. I tried to separate, I took out a lot of the, um, on the, the short term license, I took out some of the language which had come from the short term license on the public way because Steve pointed out that if it's, they're also applying for a liquor license, a short-term liquor license on the public way, they will kind of, that, that will be covered under that license and not under this one. And so it's redundant. So, um, um, really among them, what else? Steve added something in four, uh, using liquid LPG cylinders and or solar panels as opposed to gasoline or di diesel generators that, that kind of, makes that, uh, that section a little more precise. Um, let's see. And then there were a couple of good questions in section on sidewalk lunch carts. Uh, the very last part, just before you get to lunch carts before the downtown area, uh, who did, there's the, due to different characteristics of each cart in each sidewalk space, all locations may not be appropriate for all carts. And Steve had the good question, who determines this and when? So that's a carryover from the select board regulations. And I don't know what criteria they used to uh, determine that. I don't know if lunch carts come, there are several standard sizes and, um, but that's a good question. And then the, um, also the question of how does the paying applicable parking fees work? So if we say they have to have like several parking spaces in the, to, with a, Kind of form a, a kind of a, a barrier or have some space around them and they have to 
pay for those parking spaces? Who kind of who collects the fees for that? How do they like? Do they write a check to somebody? Um, so administratively, how does that work? Yes, Doug. So a, a couple of things. One on the yeah. on the first question you posed, which is around the lunch carts and the sizes and determination. Right. Um, I don't know that the select board necessarily had something in mind there, okay. but I think that one of the things you know, sort of case by case basis. But I think that what we may want to think about, or, and we can put it in as as examples of without being exhaustive, or sort of the, the I think the key factors are are aspects of of uh, you know use of the public way in its in its normal way so we don't want to block it off so people can't get by in wheelchairs and mm -hmm. um you know is it is it creating an obstruction that prevents the use of of the public way in, a, in its normal way mm -hmm. and for all you know citizens and then i think the and then other safety concerns and so i think those are kind of broadly the categories that that we would apply and i think okay. it, you know it, something to that effect would probably be a sufficient addition in that regard okay um, and the other point I was going to make, oh, applicable parking fees. Uh, if they're in a place that has a, uh, a, a uh, parking meter, they just need the meter. Okay. That's, I mean, that, you know, if they ask the question, it's like, you know, either buy quarters and stuff, thing full of quarters, or get the app and just renew it when it runs out. Okay. And, and, you know, part, you know, uh, I mean, it, <clears throat> I should be, that's a way to do it. Um, and that would be incumbent upon our parking officials to swing by on a regular basis to make sure it's being paid. The alternative to that, and I think this is what we've done in the past, is that you um, you may payment in advance. So if someone wants a, a parking spot to, 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 to move into their apartment, let's say they live in a building downtown upstairs and they want to reserve for the truck you know, mm -hmm. to find the spots for the entire day, you can do that. And, and so this came before the select board, you know, those same kind of requests. These things come before the council now and probably the manager because he probably handles those now um but essentially what you do is you just you write a check to the town for that it goes into the parking fund uh and i think they either give you a placard or a little thing that you put over the meter mm -hmm. um and that that resolves that but that's typically for a very fixed amount of time i think for the short-term licenses that could also work where they write a check because it's like i'm going to be there from friday to monday and so it's you know you bet your little bag that you put over the meter head for those days. Um, if it's something uh, different than that, then you know probably you know sort of feeding the meter is the most simple thing for everyone. Mm -hmm. Would be my suggestion, okay. uh, because they're not compelled to be there every day that they could be there, and so that's where like charging them in advance for it is a little tricky. Right. Um, but that might be, you know, operationally, that may be a thing that working with the town manager's office and, and you know, to, to work out. But I think in, in cases where short term, it can be, you know, it can be part of like when they write the check for the license, you know, the thing for the parking and the spot that they're located could all be one fell swoop, right? Right. Um, to my mind, and, and just the differentiation is on the receipt to them. So they know which part was for the license and which part was for the for the parking and at, that way the town hall can sort that out in their accounting structure. I think for the longer ones where it's like a full year license, you know, and they're gonna be in a certain location, they may have a parking meter they wanna, it's, when, they, when they're in the spot, they pay the, they just pay the meter. The money goes to the right place at that point and I think it's fine. I think the key thing there is that for the, for the meter attendants that check, um, you know, compliance that they, we want to, you know, do two things with those folks. A, make sure that they kind of swing by regularly so that people are paying the meter. And then the second thing is to not enforce the limits. Like most of the meters have a limit, oh, a four hour limit or a two hour limit or whatever limit. And so those are, are don't apply. Um, and so that way they can keep feeding the meter. You know, that way they wouldn't, you know, that's a, that's a, uh, an educational piece for the folks that, that uh, are our, our parking patrol officers. So, that's what I would suggest there. Okay, all right, that's great. So, different. The, so, insert some criteria about how the public, how the lunch carts can't, how they use the public way. They can't create an obstruction, other safety concerns, and then some stuff in about how they can pay the fees with the difference between a short term and a longer term. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I can put that in. Okay. All right. Thank you. And I think uh, there was something else. Steve, was there something else? 
Oh, I took out the the noise, the noise music identifications. I said, I just said, do not play music or any kind of sound amplification. I, it said it. They took put it to attract customers, but I just I'm Steve's recommendation. I just took it out. So I tried to yes. uh, sim simplify what I had. I think we had a little uh, discussion about that last time. How would you determine yes. if it's to attract customers or not? And they don't right. really have any need to be playing amplified music. Although I yeah. guess we would want to think now that it just crossed my mind. Now we might want to think about that with ice cream trucks, and maybe not. But so do we license ice cream trucks? I mean, they, they have to get of... mobile food establishment licenses. This from... may have been a blind spot of the old regs. They have to get mobile food establishment licenses. Oh, do they? And it is the public way. Okay. Um, and maybe that is... Um, yeah, I, actually, all... I haven't seen one in years. So are there any... Have, have any currently applied for licenses? I don't... I, th I think there was... Um, I know for at least on the food side, there's a whole rigmarole of criminal background checks they have to go through that other mobile food establishments don't. I know earlier this year, there was, um, I forget what it was, but it was some local kind of farm creamery place that had a truck that, you know, wouldn't wouldn't be driving around with the playing the music, but was going to, you know, more of an actual you know, food truck style that was going to some event on Hampshire College. And we um, were kind of going back and forth and whether they would have to go through all of that criminal background check types of stuff for that, that event. Um, so I know we have the regulatory structure for it, at least in the food side, but I don't right. know um, if there are actually any around here so is there a you don't have a record of like ice cream trucks that have applied for a i can't think of any that have license. crossed my desk since i've been in this role okay besides that um edge case i guess okay all right but we do that would be fall under our peer purview yeah i mean it is a it is a mobile food all. establishment and on the public okay. way yeah all right all yeah right. i think it's i think that's they should be considered a part of the same thing because so, you, know, right. you have to sort of jump both hoops. I mean, you know, if you're going to sell sandwiches, you got to jump both our hoop and there and the, right. the, the uh, you know, um, inspection services uh, hoop. I, I would presume we should apply the same standard to ice cream trucks or okay. anything else. I mean, you know, I don't, I, don't I, I think we set our license price in a way that it's not too burdensome. Um, but at the same time. Okay, I was just confused because under definitions, and what I took from the select board is that lunch carts are something that are not, they're defined differently from ice cream trucks under state law. But let mm -hmm. me look it up. So I don't know if there are different, different laws for an ice cream truck, but let me look that up. That is an interesting question. Wouldn't think they would. I don't know. Look yeah, I don't, I don't know if um, I guess yeah. In the in the regs, they were they were kind of you know excluding ice cream trucks, but I, I don't know if um in state law that necessarily means maybe maybe, you know, maybe it's just Amherst carving that out, or maybe it's state law that carves that out. Yeah, I don't I don't know, but I will um, I'll look that up. That will be all, nice. all this all, all almost makes me wonder if they were just blanket banned at some point, and I don't know if. Any of you have lived in Amherst longer than I have any memory of something like that happening, but. You mean of banning the ice cream trucks? I do. Yeah, I know my hometown banned them. Oh, um, really? A kid got hit by a car crossing the street, yeah. Oh, it could be recent. We had, um, I remember seeing them years ago, but I haven't, when my kids were very small, but I haven't yeah. seen them in a long, long time. So uh, did, were they banned? I don't know. Do you remember, Doug? Where they banned? Joan, I have the same recollection you do. That I've seen them in town, but it's been a long, long time since I have, so I don't, I don't recall that. Yeah, but probably seven years, maybe six or seven years. I have a vague uh, memory of seeing one in college, maybe yeah, seven or eight yeah. years ago. But okay, well, um, all right. So I will look into ice cream trucks. Um, let's see, anything else, Steve? That we put in. Oh. The reciprocal license I have not gotten to yet, but I will work on that part with other towns, and that was for short term. And that is Rob, Mara, and Sue that I have to get in touch with. Yeah, and I think the thing you know, the ice cream truck is where you where you would see more of that. I think. Uh, I mean, the other thing with ice cream trucks is they they tend to um, 
which is different than, than food trucks is they tend to um, intentionally travel throughout the town, mm -hmm. which is different than I'm going to sort of set up this for a short period of time, but it's more one location for the day type of thing. Right. Um, and so because of that mobility of, of ice cream trucks, it's, it's probably, <clears throat> That's a, that's an area where a shared license or you know a, a you know a common database of licensees or something like that that with a few other towns would could be helpful. Um, although the the cases of food trucks, it could be it could be very interesting to do um, sort of food trucks that way too. I mean the, the sort of more classic thing we're talking about here with like you know meals being served. Mm -hmm. it, it could be considered pro-business if you if you had a common license that that uh, could be shared across multiple communities. Okay. So I mean, there's plus minus there. I think you know the, the you know business improvement district and, and chambers of commerce around the area might have you know they're resistant to these folks to begin with, and I think they'd be more so if you gave them an even easier way to operate in multiple towns. So right, kind of a kind of a tough call. interesting concept to explore with you know just the the mechanics of a license and, and a, a system with with Rob Mora and, and Sue relative right. to that. Right. Okay. So I could do that. Um Steve, do you see any something else jump out at you? Did we cover everything that you changed? Um I think so. The uh, the uh, the only um we did kind of touch upon the uh the question of the locations and and um, I think one of the tougher problems if we ever did kind of get this kind of thing taking off is um is the question of who gets what location yeah um, if because people kind of in the old system um you know they you know you could apply for as many of them as you want and just kind of go wherever you want and we only really have one and he's got a pretty well established spot he likes but um right. you know there's not really anything stopping somebody new from from uh, applying for that spot as well and showing up five minutes before he does and going in the same location. Right, um, right. But yeah, then if you let people reserve them, then on the other hand, um, you know, he, he might not be, he might be on vacation for a week and nobody else can legally use that spot. Right, right. Yeah, so I was, I was, you know, trying to debating with myself whether we should, I should keep what I'd envision as kind of a lottery process, but then they can't, if they get one spot and they don't have the, the ability to move around freely as they did earlier. And I think as long as we only have one lunch cart, you know, maybe it's something that we just don't deal with until we have to. And um, like, you don't know what, I don't know. I, I don't I don't think we should sweat it too much. It feels like yeah. if we, we really go down that route, we're just kind of over-engineering something that right, exactly. may never come up. Um, right. And then, yeah, it might just over-engineer and then we, get some lunch carts in and we realize immediately, oh, now seeing how people want to do it, it's, it's, it could be a lot of work for, for nothing. Right. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I, but I, I think it's worth thinking about a little bit. I don't yeah. necessarily put it in regulation. I, I think the idea of a reservation system might be decent, um, which then you have to think about what time horizon do you want? Who's going to manage that for, you know, it's like we had to call Steve every week and reserve for next week. And, you know, so it gets there's some real like workload issues that come up with something like that. Right. Um, but uh, but I think kind of continuing to sort of think through options around it are, are worthwhile. I, I agree. We don't need to put anything in at the moment and then we'll see how things play out. OK, great. So I will I've got a few things to put back in the lunch cart regulations and then check out ice cream trucks and reciprocal licenses with Sue and Rob. And then I will have another another draft for next time. Hopefully. Yeah, I, I will be happy to be a uh, a uh, in those conversations with Sue and Rob Marion. Oh, so, super. OK, yeah. let me email them. And I don't know. I'm actually leaving for a while next Tuesday. So um, but maybe. I know mm -hmm. Rob's going to be out until at least next Tuesday. Oh, he is? Okay. Perfect. Susan, right. I've spoken to her before. She doesn't believe there's any reciprocal um, provisions. Okay. But I have heard other food food vendors who say there is in other towns. Okay. So um, we may want to start reaching out to other towns, actually. Oh, looking for other towns? Yeah, see okay. what they think, because um, 
Yeah, Susan's the most familiar with the the food code, and maybe you know maybe other towns have different interpretations. But our interpretation is there's you have to get licensed in each town. So okay, we can get other towns to do it. All right, so I'll start with that. So maybe that conversation with them won't happen until early August sometime, Steve. That's all right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Well, if there's nothing else, I just have one question. Yes. Um, it, and and I'm hoping Steve has has had this. I, I believe that the um, rules that allow us to meet remotely have been extended. Oh, really? That, I think so. And and I think what it allows for is hybrid type meetings. But I maybe have misread that or misunderstood the circumstance. Maybe it was just wishful thinking. <laughs> um, but I I want to say literally in the last couple of days that maybe the state came back out and extended until. And I think one of the questions that came up was whether it was through December of 22 or December of 23, which would be wow. a half. Um, but I don't know if, if, if there was, they allow for remote or they allow for hybrid and they encourage in person. I, I just don't know. And I didn't know if, if anyone knew and, and Steve, whether you knew, because technically the other allowance for this ends like next Tuesday or Wednesday or something. Yeah. Um, and I think it's been extended, but I don't know what slight tweaks they might have made to it. Yeah, so I um I haven't heard anything, um, but the town manager's office was watching this issue very closely, um, and they were giving pretty regular updates, um, you know, last year and earlier this year when that was kind of on the fence. Um, so I do have full confidence they're watching that. I mean, almost every um, boarding committee is still online fully online at this point i think the town council is the only one that's not at this point and they're hybrid right um so i don't know what the situation is now but i do feel quite confident that the um the uh the town manager's office will will keep us in the loop and um i don't think we'll, we will ever come up on a situation where we unexpectedly have to move in person but um i can i can send an email and try to check in if they've heard anything because i didn't hear there was any news on that yeah, I think there was, and I just, I, whatever it was, I didn't have a chance to sort of read it closely or explore closely, <clears throat> but I know that one of the questions someone posed was like, wait, this is 2023, is that right? And so, um, anyway, so I think there has been some motion uh, or movement on that with the legislature or, or the governor's office, I'm not sure which, um, that'd be great, because that may, may or may not impact our meeting later this month. Yeah. I don't think it technically will. Um, and, and regardless of that, just speaking of, of remote meetings, you know, the, the town does have policy on, on remote meetings, uh, not video remote meetings, but, but worst case, you know, you, you have to have a quorum and, you know, the, the, the town regulations on remote meetings um, or the town policy on, on remote meetings was, uh, I think a quorum had to be physically present at the meeting, but a member could participate. Um, you know, you had to have, it was a phone connection. Um, I think this came up for us early on when we had, um, oh shoot, I'm forgetting the gentleman's name that was on, was a commissioner and he, he needed to do a couple of meetings remotely because he was oh, traveling. Oh, Paul, Paul, Paul right. Yeah. So we, I mean, we've done it that way, you know, if we had to, but, but um, anyway, I just bring it up as a, as a point that, that may create some change for us, but I don't think so. But I know I do know it got extended, so I think there's, you know, uh, the availability of of, of um, remote is still there. Okay. I'm just not sure if it's modified in some way that changes how we might operate. Okay. Yeah, I will. Um, I will uh, get in touch with the town manager's office and try to figure out if there's been any movement on that. Okay. Great. Thanks, Steve. Um. So, oh, guidelines, regulations for liquor license decisions. Hallie is not here. So we'll move that one to the 28th. Um, topics not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the meeting. I think Steve sent around an email I got from Mandy Johanneke about some legislation that the town council wants to take up, but she said it wouldn't uh, they have some regulations. They want to move the, basically they want to move, uh, did everybody get that? They want to move the fees that are in the. I don't think the that was in the packet, but I did forward it. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's week. not in yeah. the packet. Right. Anyway, she wants, so this will come up. This is not a rush. 
because they're not going to deal with it until September. They want to take the, there are some fees which are in the bylaws and they want to get rid of them and just delegate the authority to so it'll just say fees determined by board of license commissioners or something like that. So we will put at some point we'll put that on the agenda and it looks like pretty straightforward legislation where they're just redlining a couple of the yeah, $100 for this and that. So um, but we can we don't have to talk about that until later. Um, I need to say I stumbled across those when I was looking for the other. I don't recall them off the top of my head what they are, but um, they're truly fees that should be uh, not in the bylaws. Right. So yeah. You got to pass a bylaw or change a bylaw to change the fee. Right. And so they're, think... they're just three and they're identified one, two, three. Uh, the ones I saw, I only saw three, but they may have others. Um, right. So. Yeah, I think it'll be just... a fairly straightforward thing. Right. Yeah, they're just cleaning them up. So, um, so we'll talk. So that's coming at some point. Um, what else? Is there a? Are there any minutes? No minutes, unfortunately. That, okay. Now let's see. I'm just getting keep losing my agenda for some reason. And do we have what else is on there? Is that we're trying to come to the that's end? That's it. That's it. Oh, do we have a time? A date and time? We have the twenty eighth at five o'clock. Uh, which. We'll have a completely different meeting because Gaston and Hallie will be here and Doug and Dylan may not be. So, um, but anyway, so I hope you have good travels and um, we'll just adjourn. Is there anything else? Anybody I'll else? I'll move okay, to adjourn. To adjourn. Okay, Is, thank you, Doug. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, thanks, Dylan. Um, let's take a vote, Dylan. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye, and that is three to zero if one absent. We are adjourned at 5.48 p.m. All right, we'll have a good trip. Both Thank you so much. Thank and you. And I will Thank see you. you. See you when you're back. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Have Thanks a lot, Steve. Thanks. Bye.